Um, thank you, everyone, for coming to Free Week 2. Uh, we're going to be talking about, let's see, basic uh, intro to breadboarding, uh, some basic components, hardware, um, and how they all go together in circuits. Um, and towards the end, we're going to I have a little demo circuit that I can show you. Um, so one point oh breadboards. So what is a breadboard exactly? I'm sure that you guys have a pretty good idea already. Um, but it's a plastic board has arrays of metal contacts. Uh, it accepts 22 American wire gauge. Um, it allows for basically fast prototyping of electrical circuits. Um, it's very, it's very beginner. Um, pretty much after your first year, you don't really use the breadboards anymore. You kind of do simulations um, first for your prototype. And then after you, because simu simulation is quicker than actually messing with the, the boards, because as you guys will find out, um, a lot of the times the little prongs don't fit into the, the holes in the breadboard very well. And it actually ends up being counterproductive but um, anyways, let's see, what else does it say on this slide? So American, what is American wire gauge? Um, there's all different sizes. It's from zero to 40 uh, or 40 to four aught. Now the smaller the number means the thicker the wire. And so 22 is about midway um, between the thickness of the wires. Let's see different limits. Oh yeah, so the thicker the wire, you're gonna be able to uh, transmit more current and voltage. Um, the most common uh, material is copper and it's between uh, American wire gauge 18 to 24. So here's some pictures of breadboards. Um, if you see the picture on the top left, we have the red and blue terminals. Are, these are bus rows. So the red is where you connect the positive terminal of the battery. And then the blue, it would be the ground. And they are not connected across the board. So if you were to create um, a circuit that goes across the board, you'd have to jump these two, uh, two bus rows together, positive to positive and then negative to negative. And then I have an example of that later. Also, the center of the breadboards is not connected. So you can see these rows, these rows are connected right here, but not across the center whereas the bus rows are, or the bus columns are connected. So um, these ones on the center are connected horizontally, whereas the ones on the side are vertical. And then I included this picture on the bottom. Um, if you're not careful, you might end up with a breadboard, where if you could see right here, it's actually divided across the midpoint um, on the bus rows. So if you happen to put a component over here, um, and then connect it to the positive or negative uh, bus rows, it's not going to be getting the power if your power source is connected over here. So if you're not careful, you'll make the same mistake me and a couple other people did in our 201 classes and think that we're doing our, our putting together our circuit wrong, but actually it's just that, you know, these, these aren't connected right here. So you want to make sure that you don't have this breadboard, or if you do, just before you begin your circuit, uh, connect the bus rails across the center. Um, let me see, resistors. Charlie, you wanna start on resistors? Yeah, so what are resistors? Resistors are a passive component that reduces the current flow and there's no polarity in resistors, meaning that when you connect the probes into the connections for the breadboard, uh, it doesn't matter which way you plug them in, in terms of your circuit. So it'll have the same, it'll function the same whichever way you connect it. You'll see later on when the polarity does matter. So for resistors, you're gonna be working with stuff like Ohm's law. So you're gonna find the voltage across the resistor uh, that you can find things such as the current across the resistor and you're gonna need the resistance. Most of the time we work with like five volts. So let's say you just have a, a, a breadboard circuit just filled with a bunch of resistors. You can kind of put some practice into it and kind of uh, I guess do it all by hand and then connect it onto a breadboard and with like multimeters and stuff like that, you can actually see how much voltage and current is going through each one of the resistors. Uh, some of the properties of resistors is that when you have them in series, the equivalent resistance is you just add them up as is. You don't have to really 
I guess change it in any way. But then when you have it in parallel, you have um, you there you add the the equivalent resistance is different. In this case, it's the inverse. So you would have this is a shortcut right here that we have. But typically, it'll be shown in textbooks as just one over R one plus one over R two plus one over R three, and then all of that in the numerator of one over the whole thing that you have. And that's basically what we have for resistors. So here's just some schematics that we have. So on the left, we can see three resistors in series with a voltage source on the left side, most of the circuit. And you can see the direction of which the current is flowing through the circuit. And as you can see on the, on the right side of the equal sign, you see we just have the equivalent resistance there. And like we said previously, all of these things would just be R1 plus R2 plus R3. And then right here, we have a special case and that's the resistors in parallel. So like we said before, that's gonna be one over R, one over R1 plus one over R2 and all of that divide in the numerator of one divided by all of that. And then you'll, you can see here that your equivalent resistors would be R over two. Yeah, uh, that works for the case where the resistors have the same res uh, same resistance in ohms. It just becomes R over two. Um, let me see. Before I go to LEDs, which is the next slide, I want to go back to this little chart right here. Uh, if you're in 201, professors might tell you to memorize this. Um, that way you, or yeah, because they're gonna start teaching you and they want you to say, you need to put a 220 ohm resistor in your circuit somewhere. You're gonna to have to memorize the band code. But honestly, it's a lot easier if you just get like a, a digital multimeter like this. Uh, let's see, there we go. It has functions where you can just, uh, you know, plug your resistor in between the two terminals and it'll tell you the resistance. But honestly, it's a lot quicker. And you don't have to get, you don't have to worry about memorizing the uh, band codes. So. Uh, one other thing, if you want to go back real quick too. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say in the case that you don't have a multimeter, there's actually things online that you just uh, kind of input the colors of the bands onto, uh, I don't know what the websites are, but you can just Google, um, I guess, resistor calculator or something. And it'll show like whether you have a four band or a five band resistor and you just plug in the colors there and then it'll tell you what the resistance is if you don't have a multimeter. I didn't know about that. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, you might you might uh, want to check that out instead of buying a digital multimeter. Yeah, mm. and right now too that we're online, you know, some people just don't have those things. Definitely. So now let's move on to LEDs. So what is an LED? It's a light emitting diode. Um, a diode specifically is something you learn about a little bit later in your 330 class. Uh, so these are nonlinear. They're actually, the polarity matters. So if you're looking at a diode, like in this picture right here, it's kind of a positive and a negative terminal. And easy ways to tell is if you're on the top view of an LED, uh, the flat side is going to always be the negative side. Um, that's probably the best way to tell. Uh, there's another way that you can kind of try and tell is the positive terminal is usually the longer leg, uh, but in some cases they're not all made the same and you might have the positive be the shorter terminal. I don't know why they do that, but um, in most cases actually it's the longer is the positive, but just for some cases it's not. So it's always easy to just remember the flat side is the negative terminal. Um, so the forward voltage on, on uh, LEDs is usually between 1.8 to 3.3 volts. Uh, depends on the color of the LED and the forward current is a max of 20 milliamps. You, that's very important. You don't want to supply more current than its max. Um, and this applies to basically every component, whatever its forward current is, the max current, you don't want to supply more. Um, if you do, you can test it if you want. You'll burn out the LED or in some cases they'll actually pop. Uh, depends on what kind of LED you have actually, but it's very important that you don't put more than a max current or you'll, you'll lose your component. Um, so a little bit more about a diode, a quick overview. It only lets current pass in one direction, meaning it has polarity. And um, let me see, positive anode, negative is cathode. I never learned this mnemonic device, but 
you can you can try to memorize this too. Panic means positive anode. So the positive is the anode and negative is cathode um, because people are gonna you know say anode cathode uh, in terminology instead of positive negative and it's good that's a good little uh, way to memorize which one's the anode and which one's the cathode so again positive anode negative cathode. Uh, yeah, and, uh, sorry one more quick thing i don't know if you're gonna move on right now just in case if you don't have that flat side either for whatever reason and both legs of the led are the same size one other thing that you can see is on the left side on the positive uh positive anode side that it's kind of thinner and then on the negative cathode it's actually a bit thicker and even from looking at it on top you can see that the anode is a little bit shorter and the cathode is going to be longer all right so next up is capacitors so what are capacitors uh, capacitors work to store electrical charge uh, one or more pair of conductors separated by an insulator uh, it's similar to a battery. It comes in various voltage ratings, so it can go from 0 0.5 volts to 500 volts. Uh, the units of capacitance is in farads. Uh, we most, most commonly measure the capacitance in uh, microfarads. So what are capacitors actually made of? Uh, most common materials is the uh, dielectric, is a uh, ceramic material, and, but we only also have, um, what is that, polystyrene, polyester, mm -hmm. Ta what is that? Tant tantalum. tantalum, tantalum, paper, plastics are also used. Uh, but similarly, like to diodes, capacitors also have uh, polarity, so they also have their anodes and their cathodes. But for these, sometimes uh, the legs won't be one won't be shorter than the other. But if the coder can point to it here on the capacitors themselves, they would have a positive and a negative on the sides of the both different terminals of the of the capacitor so that that way you can tell which one is anode and which one is cathode yeah so like Gerard was saying um he didn't have mouse control but this uh this three lines right here are actually negative lines which is designating that that's the the anode of the capacitor so inductors, these are kind of a little magical component that it's a little bit hard to understand. Um, I know going through my courses, the professors didn't really uh, give me like a comprehensive um, way to understand what was really happening. But the easiest way to put it is it stores energy in a magnetic field. It's an insulated wire. Uh, it's usually wrapped around a magnetic core. Um, these are called ferromagnetic cores. Uh, you'll learn about them in 350 uh, when you study, um, what are they called, transmission. Um, and I forgot the name for it. Uh, Gerard, are you in 350 right now, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, you learn about uh, inductors and ferromagnetic cores in 350. Um, it's used to resist current changes uh, and it supplies a steady amount of current. So a good example is if you have a power surge protector uh, that you use for any of your uh, com electrical components in your house, it'll actually protect uh, that component from a power surge, uh, which would mess up the internal components. So um, the effective inductance does depend on the number of coils and the type of core. So you're going to get a higher um, higher amount of inductance uh, the more you the more coils you have around your core, and then also uh, the type of core because there are certain cores that are more magnetic than others, um, and the unit of inductance is measured in Henry's. Um, and let's see, I think I covered pretty much everything about inductors. I mean, uh, one more thing to add is that. Because it is just a wire that's wrapped around the core, it's basically just a, like a coil. So if you guys have taken physics and electricity and magnetism, uh, if I don't know if you guys have taken that class yet, but you definitely will. And in that class, you'll kind of learn this thing called the right hand rule, which is like, it's kind of a, your four fingers here kind of point in the direction 
of which the current is flowing through your your what is it your coil or in this case your inductor and your thumb itself is the direction of the magnetic field i believe so you you kind of get into how they kind of behave in a sense when you take electricity and magnetism but yeah, i think you get more, a lot more into it in class like 360 which is basically all magnetic fields and definitely this creates magnetic fields if you take electricity and magnetism again you see that there's a relation between current flow and magnetic field so here's an example of a LED circuit. Um, this is very basic. It basically shows the fundamental fundamentals of any circuit. So you're gonna have a, a battery or a power source. And then for any circuit, you're gonna need some type of resistance for the circuit to work. So you can have a resistor and then you have a LED in series with it. Now, like I was saying earlier, it's important to have a resistor to resist um, you know, any amount of current because if you don't, Basically, since voltage is equal to current times resistance, that means the current would be infinite and you'd end up basically breaking whatever component you have. So let me see, I put together, I basically put together the circuit on my breadboard right here. And I'm just gonna show you guys the effect of um, resistance in a simple resistor uh, and LED circuit. I have to stop sharing real quick and then make my other self post. Oh, you can just um pin the video, and I believe it'll it'll. So they make it big. Is it large for everybody? Sorta. Is it blurry? No, it looks good on my end. Yeah, I got a new uh, twelve megapixel camera on my tablet. Slight brag. Uh, where is that that I was using? <laughs> so, basics to breadboarding. Um. You can see here I have a power source, uh, positive connected to the red uh, bus row, and then the negative, which is the black connected, uh, the ground connected to the blue, which is the negative terminal. Um, and then let's see. So you can see if you follow along through right here, I have the positive terminal of the bus row connected to a 220 ohm resistor. And then in series with the resistor, I have right here the positive terminal of the LED, and then I have it connected across the center of the breadboard because the breadboard is, you know, split in the center. So no current would flow through without a component connecting both sides. So then I have the negative connected over here. And then what I have right here, this big thing is a potentiometer so that I could show you the effect of resistance on the LED. Um, little bit about, about a potentiometer real quick. It's got three prongs. Let me see, it's kind of hard to get out of the breadboard. So if I go right here. So either the left or right can be your positive terminal. It's kind of doesn't really matter. Uh, it only affects, it's only, it's only effect is which way that this knob will turn. Um, and then how that creates more uh, resistance or, or less resistance. So you could put either the right or left terminal, the outermost terminals connected to the positive in your circuit. And then the center is gonna be the ground. So the middle terminal gets connected through this black wire right here to the uh, ground terminal, the negative bus row over here. And then in order to complete the circuit, I have to connect this row back to ground over here. So I use this jumper wire to go all the way across the breadboard. And as you can see, the LEDs on. Now the effect of resistance in the circuit, there is the most resistance right now because I have the uh, potentiometer turned all the way to, which would be clockwise to the right. So the full 5K resistance of the potentiometer plus the 220 ohms right now is affecting the amount of current that goes through the LED. And if I were to start turning this to the other side, you can see the LED start getting brighter. And that's because that's, that's where, now I have the resistance on the potentiometer all the way to zero. So the only resistance in the circuit is from the 220 ohm right here. And you can see how that affects the amount of current flowing through the circuit. So this is the max amount of current flowing through the circuit. And then if I were to turn the resistance all the way up, 
that's the least amount of current you can flow through the uh, circuit. And that's just the fundamental um, theorem of circuits, uh, voltage equal to current times resistance.